Today we have the building design and construction systems uh, topic. Uh, this exam can go anywhere from really large-scale decision-making to quite fine-grained uh, detailing. Uh, the, the essence of this, though, is, as Mark said, you're using these, that fine-grained detailing, those, those other kinds of questions, as a way to think about the big issues of how does a building stay dry, how does, a, how does it stay warm or cool, how does it stay comfortable, uh, how does it not fall down, all of those kinds of uh, basic issues. And so uh, we're going to, on this particular version of the review, we're going to use a lot of that fine-grained discussion uh, because we're only going to run through a few, a few topics. Uh, so we're going to focus on, th on this one, on these fine-grained detailing materiality issues. But remember that as we talk about them, what we're really talking about are these bigger scale issues. So we're going to talk about soils, concrete, masonry, wood, uh, a bunch of that kind of stuff uh, in order to kind of really think about uh, these kind of big scale uh, decision making uh, for, for buildings. And so we're going to be at small scale and big scale all at the same time. So remember, as we talk about these things, there are also a whole lot of other potential topics that the exam can go to. And we'll pick up uh, another uh, one of these uh, events uh, down the road where we pick up some of those other issues. Uh, but hey, we got to start somewhere. So we're starting here. Let's start with uh, question number one. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right in. Hope everybody's ready. Uh, question number one, which of the following is not true regarding bentonite waterproofing? Okay, A, it is made with volcanic clays. B, it swells to a watertight barrier. C, it can be installed on top of a mud slab in a crawl space. D, it can be installed in hydrostatic condition. So the first thing we need to think about with, uh, with something, a question like this is, uh, first of all, kind of uh, what the heck is actually going on? Um, so uh, what we're really talking about when we say bentonite waterproofing, bentonite is a type of clay. So it's actually, when it's dry, it's a very dusty, very, uh, um, uh, it's like a bag of, of uh, very dry, dusty clay. And what's really amazing about bentonite is that when it gets wet, it actually gets larger. So, okay, why is that uh, interesting to us? Well, if we have, a, a, let's say, a concrete wall, and that concrete wall has a seam in it or a crack in it or something, and we can fill that uh, seam or crack with the bentonite, uh, and then other, than, you know, other layers of, of uh, stuff is added on, like let's say we have you know, boards of insulation over the top or something. There's something that kind of makes it all a contained situation. If we have that bentonite in that crack, if water does get to that crack, which of course water will, right, because water will always find its way um, into whatever crack there is, because that's the nature of water, uh, it, when the water gets in there, it'll make that bentonite wet, it then expands, and when it expands, it presses against the sides of the crack that it's in, and it becomes waterproof. It becomes a way of stopping the water from getting through. It's kind of this amazing, low-tech, simple system. Um, but it has a number of drawbacks. And the biggest drawback it has is that uh, if it's in a situation, like say for example, C, which would be the answer, uh, where I have a mud slab, so this is, I have a simple slab. For those of you who don't know the term mud slab, it's used in things like crawl spaces or places where you don't really need a full concrete slab, but you take some Portland cement, you mix it in with some water and some of the local uh, soil that's right there, and you make a kind of a very rough hewn version of, uh, of a concrete slab. So it's not particularly strong, not particularly uh, useful, but it's very, very cheap and easy and gives you a kind of a hard, simple surface that you can kind of, you know, uh, uh, use for construction purposes and things like that. You wouldn't really want to live on a mud slab, but you know it kind of makes it sort of workable. But if I had that uh, mud slab in that basement uh, and I then put the bentonite on top of it as a way to hope that I was going to get uh, 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 waterproofing out of it, well, if I had water flowing onto this space, as the water would flow in, it would just take the, the bentonite with it because it, the bentonite needs to be in a contained space for it to work. So they're very different animals in these kinds of different situations. A contained space where water is moving through um, uh, uh, capillary action and uh, surface tension and those kinds of things, that containedness is actually what's gonna make bentonite work. In an uncontained situation, I would need something that's more like a membrane. So in this situation, I might use something similar to uh, a fluid applied uh, waterproofing, or I might use a, an actual uh, like bisqueen membrane, or 
Uh, I might use uh, kind of similar to roofing materials. There's a whole bunch of ways I might try to get something to be waterproof uh, in something like a mud slab or a slab, uh, but bentonite would not be the answer. So bentonite, amazing, interesting material in terms of how it can keep water out because it's low tech and cheap. Um, not terribly cheap, but uh, cheap enough. Uh, and uh, has uh, you know, zero toxic aspects to it, um, but only works in certain scenarios. So again, thinking about this, this is a detailed kind of question, but what we're really trying to make sure that you understand or what the questions would, the exam would be trying to ask you really here is, do you kind of get that water works in different ways and that there are gonna be different ways of attacking it? Right? that not every waterproofing system is equal uh, in terms of how it, how it works and how it would be used. And so you have to find the right one for the right fit. Uh, so hope that made sense. Let's move on to number two. Yeah, and before we do, oh, uh, yes. it looks like uh, Devon, Dustin, Judd, Kevin, Michael got this right. Um, a couple of folks thought that maybe it was uh, B or D, uh, swelling to a watertight barrier or yeah, and, the other one? And, and that's because like, people would assume B because it sounds so crazy um, that, that it actually works. Like, not all clay will work. Bentonite is, is really the only uh, type of clay, like, or I, actually it's the only one I know of, maybe there's others, but um, you know, a typical clay wouldn't do this. But it's this kind of amazing thing. It swells quite a lot when it gets wet. It's a, it, it really is an expansive and it does it so fast that it actually, when it gets wet, it swells and fills the crack uh, and therefore makes it watertight. And then as it dries out, uh, it goes back to being a sort of drier, dustier material, but uh, that's okay because there's no water and you know there's no water because it dried out. And then when it gets wet again, it swells again, right? Which is why you can't have it be in a situation where it can get washed away. Mm -hmm. 